uh, this is Professor Nagenman. Uh, so I uh, posted this uh, video uh, uh, in order to uh, dispel some mixed uh, opinions about uh, high-tech vertical farming in India. So I think quite a lot of you know that I am involved in uh, computerized vertical farming, spanning across uh, hydroponics, aeroponics and even uh, organic soil-based uh, vertical farming systems. So uh, I would like to uh, bring to focus uh, some uh, uh, opinions that people carry around uh, regarding this kind of farming. One thing is uh, quite a lot of uh, people have started to say that uh, this is something not uh, required for India. Uh, uh, the reason being that India has a lot of uh, cultural land and uh, uh, vertical farming per se doesn't find a space uh, here. Uh, this is one thing that is uh, going around. Now, the second uh, point here is uh, people start saying that uh, such kind of vertical computerized farms are very expensive, the capex involved is high and so on. So I would like to talk about these two points and also about uh, why vertical farming and high-tech farming has not caught on that much uh, in India as it has got on in some other developed countries. Okay, to start with, uh, I would uh, like to uh, bring to the fore one point. Uh, India is ranked the second largest vegetable producer in the world, next only to China. Isn't that happy news? Okay, it is happy. But I am not really that happy with those figures uh, because uh, India in total produces 14% of the world's uh, vegetable produce where China produces 36% of the world's uh, total vegetable production and uh, points to be noted are that uh, China produces more than twice that of India, twice so. Uh, both of us have quite a lot of available land and why the difference why China the reason is that China started embracing high-tech farming in the 90s, the early 90s itself and they have been living with it for more than 20 years and now they have more than double the productivity of what India has and India has been shy, India has always been shy to adopt new technologies and it has taken time uh, uh, for India to adopt but uh, the uh, habit of Indians is that once they have adopted a technology they embrace, embrace it in uh, uh, with all their heart. So I expect that to happen with the high-tech the vertical farming as well and uh, uh, definitely my ambition too is uh, to make India the number one in terms of vegetable uh, productivity and the world to look at us as a food producing bowl uh, for them. So that is uh, one thing that we have to look at and all of us need to get ambitious, all of us need to get into farming. So. This kind of computerized vertical farming, uh, what it has opened up is that white collar people can do farming, uh, even very small spaces like 500 or 1000 square feet becomes a viable uh, uh, farming option. So all this is opened up, so nothing prevents any of us from uh, farming, this is completely automated, so no uh, 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 physical watering, no physical pesticides. Uh, spraying, no uh, deviating, nothing of that sort is involved and farming uh, by and large has become a white collar activity with uh, this kind of systems. The second uh, big challenge, uh, I would say that is a real uh, challenge which all of us uh, people who are involved in uh, developing such technology are uh, focusing a lot on is that India, uh, though it ranks second in terms of vegetable productivity in the world, the cost of vegetables is the lowest in India compared to any other country. Arguably, arguably I would say, but um, I've traveled to a few countries and I've not found any other country selling vegetables uh, less than the, uh, the prices that are uh, sold in India. So this uh, becomes a challenge because all this kind of uh, high-tech uh, uh, vertical enterprise farming involves significant uh, capex, capital expenditure. And uh, when you infuse capex, definitely you are always uh, looking at uh, the returns on your know, investment, the speed at which the returns can happen and uh, so on. Uh, 
So this uh, uh, low pricing of vegetables, inherent low pricing of vegetables in India uh, poses a uh, challenge for this kind of system. But again, uh, I would say this is not a very hard threat because it is all about intelligent farming. If tomato sells at 1 rupee or 2 rupee a kg, tomato also sells in India at 70 or 80 rupees a kg. So it, it is an 80 times or 70 times uh, difference in uh, the pricing of the single vegetable. So all that we need to do is shrewd farming through the right crop at the right time so that you are able to break even fast. And uh, in our experience, I've been living with this for almost 13, 14 years now. And in my experience, I find that these systems, if operated shrewdly, there are models which can make you break even even within a year at Indian vegetable prices. And if, if you have uh, or if you cultivate vegetables which are rather not uh, high on the returns, we are at least as of now we have achieved the design of systems in such a way that your capex gets paid back in around 2-3 to three years, which is pretty much good. Uh, a 33% return on investment is pretty good and definitely these systems have become very very strong contenders uh, to compete with conventional farming in uh, India. The third picture which is uh, very very uh, much in favor of uh, promoting this kind of farming uh, is that uh, the water stress table of India. Uh, you can google it, right? you'll get a picture and uh, you would see that almost 90% of India is water stress and uh, uh, with climate changes and so on. This picture doesn't look to be turned around uh, very quickly and there are also very wrong practices going on around uh, uh, India, exploitation of the water bodies and so on. And uh, so this doesn't seem to uh, be uh, set right, look to be set right uh, in the near future. And this kind of computerized vertical farming systems come as a boom here because they can work at just 10% of or 20% of the water that uh, conventional farming uh, uses. So that is one uh, area where th these kind of systems uh, can be a really good boom to farming picture in India. And uh, the last thing I would like to point out in this uh, series of uh, uh, points is that uh, the availability of farmland uh, somehow uh, there, there's, there's a very very contrasting change happening uh, there used to be white collared uh, job people who used to shy away from farming 10 years back 15 years back and uh, um, uh, rather uh, people who were ready to do physical work they used to love doing uh, farm work they used to be contented uh, 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 sort of the farm produce almost some supplementing most of their uh, food requirements uh, uh, of, of, of a month and uh, in addition they getting a, a small salary and they used to be contented but the, the, there is a whole contrasting picture now uh, the white collared people thirsting more to do farming and uh, uh, what do you call it the, the people who are ready to do physical work uh, are now shying away from uh, doing any sort of farming, be it a owner of a farm or uh, 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 a labor, uh, um, a daily wage labor or whatever. They are now shying away and they prefer the industrial jobs to farming. And this is a huge, huge challenge to India. Thanks also to the 100 day uh, job scheme provided by our government, which is, uh, let us say, the implementation is very mixed and people find that, okay, uh, they can get easy money out of it and uh, it is becoming practically very difficult to practice conventional farming. Here again, automation plays a huge role. So you just seed and harvest. Probably we'll be finding technology, robotics and so on to do, do the seeding and harvesting also in future. But right now, all the manual work that you have to do is seeding and uh, harvesting and leave the rest to the uh, computer. So the picture looks very rosy. I invite uh, uh, people uh, to come to our office. We have a model farm and just uh, talking from under uh, our model farm. And uh, so you can have a discussion with us. We are ready to work along with you. 
we are ready to build turnkey solutions. We are ready to guide you build uh, solutions, high tech farming solutions. And uh, let us change the game. And like how the IT people have shown that India can dictate terms to the world, let us also open up another uh, industry where we can say that for farming technology, India is the global destination. And we also see that because when we design such systems from India and compare it with the same systems which are uh, churned out of developing countries, the cost of these systems is very, very widely different. And uh, once we start announcing to the world that we are building such systems and we are delivering such results, I am sure that most of the countries will start buying from us and we will have another successful industry opened up uh, from uh, India. So I invite all of you to join hands uh, with us. Uh, please do visit our office. You can uh, email us. Our email ID is S U R E G R O W F A R M. That is Sure Grow Farm at gmail.com and uh, uh, you can call us at 805-68-972-95 so uh, once again invite all of you to our office and our uh, uh, model farm and also to have a discussion with us uh, hopefully uh, let us all work together thank you